can get this started. All right. So again, uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining us today. Um, let's see, sorry, just admitting more people into the room here. Um, so thank you again for joining us for our resume workshop. Uh, my name is Jennifer Christine Madamba, and I work in regional workforce development at SMUD, uh, which stands for Sacramento Municipal Utility District. And uh, before we go ahead and get started, we'll start off with an icebreaker question. Um, I know most of you have put your name, where you're from. Um, so if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and do so in the chat. But we also want to hear what's your favorite movie? that hit the big screen this summer or what is a movie that you're looking forward to um i know i saw top gun uh last month that was amazing and i'm looking forward to the new thor movie uh that's supposed to come out tomorrow um how about you becky any uh movies um that you liked that were released this summer um, I honestly am not in my movie game right now, <laughs> only because I have a one-year-old and she occupies oh. a lot of my time, um, but I have been wanting to see Hustler, and mm. I'm also in the thick of Stranger Things right now, so I know that's not a movie, <laughs> but that's really my number one priority is getting sure, <laughs> making sure I finish the finale. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think um, Stranger Things is, I, I feel it pops up on my feed every day and there's experiences in different cities. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I have to watch it like through my, like my hands because I'm so afraid of some of the creatures <laughs> they have in it, but. <laughs> oh gosh, yes, definitely. Um, let's see, the new Minion movie. Mr. I heard that was a big hit. Paris, cute. Everything yeah. everywhere all at once. Oh, I heard I that one was good. That. I should <laughs> I, like I'm just way out of the movie loop. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe you can instead of watching the movie, maybe you can see the trailers and be like, okay, maybe this is something I can watch later on. Yep, definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for putting in um, your favorite movies in the chat. Um, just a few housekeeping items to address here. Um, we do ask that you keep your mics muted. I believe everyone's mic is muted. Um, you are more than welcome to drop a question in the chat and we're happy to address it um, later on after uh, the presentation. Um, as a reminder, this session is meant to be as interactive as possible, so we welcome all forms of engagement through emojis, comments, and questions through the chat. Um, and again, all of our sessions will be recorded and posted on our Talent Board website. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass it off to Becky to introduce herself, and she'll jump into her presentation. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everybody for uh, joining today. I know everybody is busy over the summer, but the fact you're taking this initiation and initiative rather to um, uh, participate in this series is really something to give yourself credit for. So kudos to all of you and appreciate your attention and time today. Um, so just to do a quick intro for myself, my name is Becky Gavin. I manage our early career program here at Bose Corporation. So that's everything new grad hiring, um, rotational program hiring, which does target new grads, as well as I oversee our internship and co-op program. Um, I have a campus recruiter who pretty much runs the internship and co-op recruiting, um, but, you know, bakes into our overall early talent strategy. Um, we hire anything from um, computer science to software. Um, specifically, we really target embedded engineers, so people who want to be in the intersection of um, software and hardware. Um, and then anything else would be, you know, electrical, mechanical engineering, DSP, digital signal processing, as well as um, acoustic engineering. And then we hire also in non-engineering fields like marketing, um, finance, supply chain, um, and tech services, which is more of our IT focus. 
Um, we do hire internationally. I don't personally. There are other teams that hire internationally. Um, internship programs are, are probably a little bit different. They're, they're based in Portugal. Um, I think we have some in APAC and in the Netherlands, but I don't oversee uh, those programs, unfortunately. Um, but yes, feel free to ask any questions during this session. Um, I am really hoping to feed off of all of you. So you can come on camera, you can drop some things in the chat. Um, and I'm hoping we can make this as, engagement, as engaging as possible so you can take something out of this. Um, so what is the purpose of a resume? I'm really curious um, for you to kind of drop your answers in the chat here uh, of what you think the true intention of your resume really is. Because if we're talking about, you know, resumes and how to really position yourself to be the best for this fall recruiting, recruiting season, um, it's really hard because every single person who looks at your resume has their own opinion and their own preferences about your resume. Um, so how do you feel or what do you feel um, really is the true intent of your resume? Um, and just to answer your question about the season, um, when I refer to the, the recruiting season, I more so mean when students go back on campus in the fall. So typically that September timeframe when you're busy with your career fairs and your info sessions and applying to different internships and, and full-time positions. Um, so really that true like peak fall campus recruiting season. Yep, to highlight your skills and show what you can bring to the role, for sure. I think that that's a, a really important piece of what you're hoping to convey from your resume. Any other thoughts of the purpose of your resume? <laughs> highlight your past experiences, yes. And if we think about a resume, right? Um, I mean, everybody is looking for positions and typically a resume is the one thing that is required. Yep, position yourself, position your experiences for a specific role, definitely. Um, and it's kind of like that official paperwork that you hand in to say like, hey, please consider me for this, right? So sometimes it's almost like that really formal aspect of a job application to showcase your skills and experiences. Yep, definitely. Um, so the one tricky part I think that, and, and you know, I'm really open to again, having some open dialogue around this, but I think the one tricky part that people are always like, hmm, my resume is not quite getting me where I want to go, right? Like I keep submitting my resume and I don't hear anything back. So the intention here is to really try and like talk through, well, if you're not getting those responses from the applications that you're submitting with your resume, uh, maybe we can start thinking about your resume a little bit differently to make sure it's really truly positioning you in the best way possible. So as you all discussed, it is to highlight your past experiences and the skills that you can bring to the role, but it's really just to showcase you. It's your summary. It's your way of saying like, these are all of my great attributes and these are the things that I hope to bring to your organization or to this position specifically. So when you're thinking about a position, um, you wanna make sure that your resume truly aligns to that role. So I know in, in this job market, especially, there seems to be so many more positions and um, you, know, you seem to have the upper hand because there are so many different opportunities available to you. So with that being said, you can be a little bit more selective about the different types of internships and opportunities that you are pursuing or full-time as well. Um, so you can really make sure that your resume aligns with the company and the roles that you are truly targeting. So I know sometimes, you know, it's just easy to say like, oh, I'm going to submit my resume to anywhere that I see a role that seems of interest to me. But you want to make sure that a company is really going to be a place that you could see yourself at, right? So try to do some digging, like what are their values? What is the product that they're actually 
out there trying to market or can have consumers engage with? Is it something you can get behind? Is it something that makes you excited? Because those are things then that you can really tailor your resume to make sure, hey, this makes sense for me, right? Um, and really what people are looking for, and I shouldn't blanket this because again, every recruiter or hiring manager has their own specific requirements that they look for. Um, but really you want to make sure that you do have some relevant experience for that specific role. And if you don't quite have the required experience, but it seems like an area that you're really interested in and you want to learn, you know, how can we think about, okay, where have I done the requirements of the job that I can transfer onto my resume? And then if I haven't quite done it, what other skills do I have that I can show on my resume? So for example, let's say you are going for an embedded software engineer role, right? And you maybe to have never worked on an embedded system, but you really, really can pick up on things pretty quickly. You've decided to pursue um, learning C, so that way you can pursue an embedded engineer role. Um, you can show on your resume, maybe a project or something that you've done where you taught yourself that programming language really quickly. So that way, maybe a manager that doesn't see like, oh, okay, he has no embedded experience or she hasn't done an embedded role before. How can you then convey it? Oh, perfect. I have pursued learning C on my own. And here is the project in which I use C for. So there's ways to really show, oh, I've picked up on this technical experience or this technical skill really quickly. So that's transferable. A lot of times managers say to me like, oh, they don't necessarily have to have this programming language, but we want to see that they have a strong programming or coding background. So showing that rather than just listing out your skills or listing out your technical capabilities is really important. That's where you want to show, hey, I've actually written code and this is what I created by writing this code. Um, and that's where I'm kind of putting in here, you know, show where you have done the requirements of the job. So even if it's not the specific uh, technology that they're looking for, if, you know, writing code or software programming is a huge part of that job description, you want to show that you've at least done that before in whether it was a class or a project or a prior experience. Um, I also think sometimes it's really good to show those leadership attributes, right? So places where you've stepped up as either a team lead or maybe you've held a leadership role within a club or an organization. So I don't have that listed out on here, but that always show that you're willing to really work within a team environment. And especially if you're pursuing a technical role, that's such an important part of the job, right? It's so easy to be good at the technical skills and the technical capabilities and the technical parts of roles, but being able to communicate with others and work in a team environment is something that a lot of technical engineering teams will really be looking for, um, especially at the intern level. So I think other than that, other things that you wanna make sure you have on your resume are things that are super relevant for the role. So just think about, okay, if this role is requiring me to um, be able to work with others and use presentation skills, you know, make sure that you have something on your resume, whether it's a classroom experience or maybe a club where you had to work with others and then present on your findings. Um, so that way the team knows when they look at your resume, oh, they already have experience with this from their school. Any questions about anything that I have listed here? Don't raise your hands all at once. <laughs> How can you show transferable skills on your resume? Great, that's a good question. So where I listed out here, if you do not have the requirements of the job, ask yourself, do I have transferable skills? So when I mentioned transferable skills, <clears throat> that's something like, okay, again, maybe you have no experience <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> maybe you don't have the experience working as, um, I'm trying to think of a, a role here where it's not just software that I'm thinking of. Um, 
well, well, we'll default to software for now. So let's say that you don't have C++ programming language, right? But you have C or you have some other uh, similar object oriented programming language. You could show like, hey, I have coded in this and I did this on this project. Um, so it doesn't necessarily show that you have the specific coding language that they ask for, but it shows you have a very transferable skill, right? That you are able to work within an object-oriented programming language. It just might not be the specific one that they ask for. And you can show that by showing the project um, and explaining what your role was. Um, I think sometimes people think a little bit too into this, right? That they they feel like every single skill that is listed or every single um, technical capability that is listed on a job description has to be on their resume. Um, ideally, yes, but if you just list out a programming language and then the manager goes to have a phone screen with you and finds out, oh, they don't really actually know how to use this, um, it doesn't necessarily serve either of you, right? But I think if you can show where you have used a similar type of skill by learning to code in that similar type of language, or that you've ramped up or taught yourself how to use a specific coding language, those are things that they're going to want to see. Um, in addition, if it's something as simple as, you know, like project management, and maybe you haven't like worked in a project manager role um, where you can list out like, hey, I managed X project. You could basically use a classroom reference of where you served as the point or the main point of the project and were able to really delegate out the tasks, figure out the timelines in a way that is similar to being a project manager. You're just managing the project for school. So those are things where it's transferable, right? That you were really that person who delegated the tasks, who made sure that everybody was meeting their deadlines, who was there and available to make sure that the whole project was coming together. Um, so that's where you have to think about, okay, like maybe I don't have this very specific requirement of, two to three years of project management experience or zero to one year, but you can show different areas where you have actually served as a project manager, just not in that official title. Does that help answer that question? Perfect, great. And again, I mean, this is all through my my eyes, my lens of perspective for resumes. Um, but I, I think the hardest part about finding jobs is that each recruiter and each hiring manager has their own specific requirements. Um, one thing that I elected to not put on this list is a GPA requirement. Um, I think oftentimes managers are so particular about looking for a GPA requirement um, whereas I think really what's most important is showing that you are able to pursue school and, and, you know, do a pretty good job at school while also doing other things on campus, right? So um, whatever serves against you that you're not necessarily getting that 4.0, I mean, I know I was not a 4.0 student, um, there's important factors to think about that that might be weighing into that GPA. So oftentimes I try to discourage managers from even weighing that GPA as such a high value in their process. But um, sometimes that's just something that people have a specific preference on just based on, you know, oh, if they have a high GPA, that means they really care about their schoolwork and they're really dedicated and, and study, um, which they think will then transfer into um, showing your, your work quality. But I think the times have changed where we want to see more involvement on campus. We want to see you doing multiple different things and, and tinkering and, and trying to learn things on your own, um, where maybe that GPA doesn't weigh quite as heavily as it once did. But again, that's one of those frustrating points where people just have their own opinions and will uh, look at things through their own lens. Any questions, anything else? I'm hoping to make this more, um, you know, if you have specific questions that you've run into, 
Um, because again, I, I, I do feel like it's so hard to give you this blanket advice that's going to fit every single job description, every single team, every single role that you ever apply to, since everybody has, again, their own lens that they look at resumes through. So really happy to answer any specific questions that you all have. Okay, well, okay, we do have a question in the chat. Is there anything we can do to stand out when implying? Um, yeah, I think you can. Um, I think one thing in particular, especially if it's just a resume to application, um, is really reading through your job description that you're applying to and trying to find specific places on your resume where you can really highlight some of those things in the job description that they clearly are looking for. So if it is, you know, let's, let's say it is a project administrator role and they really wanna make sure that you have done some form of admin for projects before, whether it's tracking projects, or um, being able to do administrative reporting on projects, whatever that, that might be. Um, you know, you wanna make sure that you're listing out in multiple places where you have done those types of things. Um, I think in addition, sometimes it's really good to show the values that you have as an, an individual that align with the company and the overall mission. So for example, I work for Bose. We like music here. We believe that our products are creating high quality um, devices for you to listen to audio. So if you like music or if you've ever done anything relevant to um, something with music or audio, um, that's gonna be something that we would love to see because clearly your values then or your interests align with our values and our interests. And by no means does that qualify you or disqualify you. But when you're thinking about different ways to stand out, those are ways that we can then see like, hey, look at these skills that they have. Oh, and they've done it within the audio field. So that's awesome because that's where we live. Um, okay, we've got a couple new questions coming in. Love to see you. Love your QC35s. We just came out with the QC45. So uh, that's great. Um, if you are still a fresh grad, don't have years of experience, how do you gain an employer trust and make them trust you that you are worth the chance and capable and growing with them and helping their business? Um, so I think that this is any new grad's problem, even those that have gotten jobs and are fresh in their roles, um, that sense of, okay, I'm so new and I don't have as much experience as you, but I can add value to this team. Um, the good news is, is that companies and teams are hiring fresh grads and new grads because they genuinely want to hear from you. They want your different perspectives. They want your diverse experience and background. Um, so they really want to make sure that you feel, and hopefully you're getting hired into a team that does include you in the conversation and makes you feel like you can add value. Um, I think if you're if you're thinking about, okay, I'm applying to a role that looks like they're looking for three plus years of experience or five plus years of experience, and that's where this question is coming from, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, you really just have to align your resume to make sure that you're conveying you have the experience for this role despite however many years they might be looking for on the job description. And ultimately, it might not work out because they truly might be looking for someone who does have experience. And that sometimes is just due to team, team's bandwidth that even though you, you do have this, this value you can add to teams, sometimes with fresh grads, they just don't have that mentorship aspect. They don't have the time available to really get you up to speed in the areas or, or coach you in the areas where perhaps you don't have quite the experience that they need. Um, so that's sometimes why t companies will look for three plus, five plus, 10 plus years of experience in roles, um, but absolutely feel like you can still apply. Um, worst comes to worst, they decline your application, um, but just don't necessarily feel like those 
those time frames or those uh, years of experience should discourage you. Just know, like, oh, okay, they might be looking for somebody with experience, um, so you might not necessarily get that call back. Um, somebody asked how many pages should our resume be? Most of the time it's difficult to fit everything in a single page, even as a new grad. Um, I think if, if you have enough relevant experience to be on two pages, then definitely feel free to do that. But if you're just putting every single thing you've ever done in your resume and not all of it is relevant to the job description, um, then I don't think you should be going on to multiple pages. Again, this is my personal opinion. Um, and I am one recruiter at one company. Um, but really, you're, the whole point of your resume is to showcase how you are a qualified applicant for this specific position. So you want to make sure that everything on your resume is showing that relevant experience. So if you have areas where maybe, okay, I need to show that I was working, but this experience isn't so relevant, just trim down your description and your bullet points for that specific experience to maybe just one or two points so you can really try and shorten it up. Um, but you don't want a long resume that's completely irrelevant because sometimes managers and, and uh, recruiters are looking through so many resumes that again, you really wanna highlight the things that are going to make you stand out for that specific role. A bit random, but what's the most impressive personal project that I have seen? Um, wow, you're really going to rake my memory here. Um, I don't have anything, unfortunately, that comes to mind, but I do love and admire people who do go out of their way to really put together a personal project or even just a website that really highlights their experience and then shows that on their resume. Um, so it makes it easier for managers to just understand exactly, you know, what are you interested in doing and where are, does your passion really lie? Um, so I think that sometimes those are the most important things. And then, you know, I love hearing about people who are just like joining apps and, and, um, working with other people and creating apps, whether or not it's something they actually think will pan out, but it's really cool to hear about those types of things and, and what people participate in for hackathons or case studies or, or business, um, competitions. Um, it's really interesting to just hear where your problem solving lies and, and what problems you want to tackle. Um, I think sometimes managers just love to find out that sort of stuff too. Um, there's a question here about how should we differentiate our cover letter from our resume? Should we highlight key achievements on our resume or should we include content that is not on our resume, such as personal values and qualities? Um, so I personally don't like cover letters because I feel like they're the same thing as a resume. If you can differentiate your cover letter and highlight the things that you don't feel like you can really convey in your resume, um, I would 100% recommend doing that because a lot of times people will skip over cover letters because the resume really highlights everything that they need to see. Um, and again, I'm one person, some people might really, really like cover letters, but a lot of times for me, I feel like I'm looking at the same thing. So, um, to answer your question, Sandy, I would 1000% really focus on using your cover letter to really tackle the things about the job that you feel like, okay, maybe this is a transferable skill and I'm showing it in my resume, but I want to expand on it more in my resume, in my, um, Cover letter, sorry. So um, like a lot of times people might be looking for very specific customer service experience. And while you might not have had a customer service role, you could show in your resume like, hey, I worked at a restaurant and then expand in your cover letter saying, I had to deal with the most ridiculous requests ever, right? Because working in a restaurant does that um, and really address some of the customer issues that you dealt with and how you were professional and the outcome that you provided. Um, so that's where I really find value in cover letters. I also think that cover letters are a great place to really showcase your personal values and interests. So that way, um, like if you're applying to like a clean tech energy for, um, 
company, for example, um, but you have no experience previous, previously working there, but you personally love doing compost or love gardening or are very ecocentric and thinking about the earth and you know those types of things concerned with global warming. That's a place where on your resume, you can really, really, I'm sorry, on your cover letter, you can really kind of dive into those things deeper and show your personal interests and why you're so invested in the organization that you're applying to. Um, question from LinkedIn. What are the major things to be covered in our resumes as a new grad? Um, that's a good question. I think the biggest things to cover in your resume as a new grad are the professional types of experiences that you've had. So hopefully where you interned, we, we want to see, you know, what are your internship um, experiences? What projects did you work on? Um, did you work in team environments? Were you working pretty independently? Um, I love also seeing the projects and the classwork and classroom type of, uh, I feel like there's a lot of different types of things that you get involved in, especially with companies through classrooms. So I think that those are important to show any projects that you have where you worked on like a business case from a company or a technical project problem from a company. Um, I also think a really, really important thing is covering um, any types of like unique competitions that you participate in. So like if you're in hackathons, if you attend conferences, if you're a part of a club on campus and what different types of um, things you go out of your way to do. So as an individual, you know, on campus, you are doing all the same things as your peers, right? You're attending your classes, you are uh, trying to get an internship. So what else stands out about you that makes you a little bit more unique and individual um, that, you know, really highlights who you are as a person? So, um, you know, when I was in college, and this was very, very many years ago, um, I had a lot of interests. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to get into, but I knew I liked, you know, being eco-friendly. So I joined the, the Eco Husky Club because I went to UConn. Um, I also love sports. Um, so I was a sports illustrated on-campus consultant. Um, <clears throat> mind you, I'm not doing any of those things now, but at the time, these were interests that I had. Um, and I highlighted those things on my resume and, um, you know, that really in a way showed my personality, right? That those were interests and things that I really liked doing. So those are things that I also think are, are really helpful to show as a new grad, just what are your different focuses and areas and, and making sure that those align overall with, with what you're interested in and what companies you're pursuing. Any other questions? I feel like I might have breezed through some of these answers. So if you need me to expand or elaborate on anything, I'm more than happy to. Do any of you, I, I have questions for you, but do any of you have frustrations with your resume where you're like, oh my gosh, I've had to submit so many of these. I don't want to make an individual resume for every single position that I apply to. Um, I remember feeling that way when I was in college. <laughs> yes, yeah. That, that is 100% how I felt too. And unfortunately, it is the reality, right? Where you know, if you send out a blank blanket software resume um, or a blanket, let's just say accounting internship resume, um, but then you apply to a financial analyst role that seems similar, but then you don't necessarily really highlight any of the analytical skills that you have because you've just been submitting this blanket accounting resume. Um, you know, it's very time consuming. Um, but one recommendation I have for that is maybe just creating three different copies of your resume, right? Like try to target three different general job descriptions. And so that way you only have to edit and update um, just a few things on your resume when you might be applying to a specific role. 
Um, but if you can create those three different versions that really align with three different job profiles, then maybe that submission and, and having to edit every single resume doesn't feel so overbearing every time you have to go in and submit it. Do you have any tips for including metrics on your resume? Sometimes it's hard to quantify your work. Um, yes, I think managers and, and hiring teams love to see what you did and they love to see the specific impact that you had. So any way you can quantify your work is 100% uh, something I would recommend doing. But to your point, it is sometimes really hard, especially if you've only done an internship for 12 weeks and maybe you don't know the exact impact that you had because you didn't get to see that play out because you were only there again for 12 weeks. <clears throat> so I think when you don't have those quanti quantifying um, data points, the best thing that you can do is really be very clear about the impact and the overall um, impact that you were hired to do. So maybe you were hired to evaluate um, a certain process and recommend um, some improvement steps to reduce, let's say, a service level agreement or a specific wait time. You can address maybe some of the targets that you knew you had to hit. Um, and so when you get into those conversations with the teams after the fact, you can talk through some of those metrics and some of those things that you were able to do. I also think um, the best thing that you can really take away from doing an internship or a co-op role if you have the opportunity to work for six months is make sure on day one and week one, you know what you were hired to do. So at the end of the internship, you can actually present what you were able to do um, because then you really do have that story where you can provide quantifiable um, metrics and data points to add to your resume. But a lot of times I feel like it, it's really unfortunate and we try to be really clear with our hiring teams to be very, very upfront about like, hey, this is what we're hiring you to do. And we expect you to present on what you're able to contribute to this overall project or process at the end of the internship. So you do know what you're taking away from the internship. But um, some teams aren't as good at that. So you really have to make sure you're having those conversations with your hiring manager. So you know the tangibles that you were able to contribute to walking away from your internship rather than like, oh, I responded to emails. I talked to people every day about the project I was working on. Um, but you don't really know how it fits into the bigger picture when you're just kind of in those more interaction, uh, responsive modes of working. So hopefully that helped. Um, I do agree that sometimes it is really hard to quantify your work, especially at the undergrad or even the grad level. But I think if you can just think about it with your team, with the teams that you're working on and, and your manager about like, what are the goals and, and try to create some metrics around it, that can really help you in trying to quantify your work. Um, after preparing resumes, how should we evaluate it? I have heard a lot of companies use some sort of software to shortlist resumes. Is it true? If it's true, would you recommend any software in which we should evaluate so that we can make our resumes perfect by evaluating ourselves? Um, companies do use resume filtering softwares. Um, I am not one of those companies. I am not one of those people. I do review resumes for the roles that I recruit for. Um, I wouldn't be able to answer this question for that reason, unfortunately. Um, I think the biggest thing from what I've heard about those software filtering um, platforms is that they really are looking for the keywords of the job description. Um, and those are also things that human people also look at when they're reviewing resumes as well. Um, the difference for me is like if I am looking for specific programming skills, I'm looking for that to be listed under your experience and not just under your skills. Um, like I want to see that you were an embedded software engineer co-op or intern and that you were using C to program on embedded systems and see the different types of um, other things that you did technically in that internship or co-op or maybe in a classroom setting. Um, so I assume that the software platforms are looking for similar things. They're looking for those keywords that are really required in the job description essentials. 
So I'm sorry, I can't really talk about the specific softwares because I have just never used them. I'm a human and I, I humanly look at, re at resumes. So <laughs> um, Kira asks, how should one structure a resume? For example, should education be on the very top or the bottom? So I think your resume should be structured based on, and I probably should have actually written this as a tip because this is something that I feel pretty strongly about. Um, I think your resume should be structured based on what experience of yours is most relevant to the job description. So again, when think about a recruiter who's looking through a resume of maybe a hundred resume or a stack of a hundred resumes for a position. You wanna make sure that the first thing that catches their eye is whatever is most relevant to the role. So if you are a business administration student and you're studying finance and you're applying to a corporate finance internship, I would probably put on there the corporate finance classes that you have taken or the corporate finance projects that you have worked on um, or the corporate finance internship that you have done. Or if it's more you're going for like a financial services firm, anything relevant to that. So sometimes what you can do is you can create a section on your resume called relevant experience. If it's more of like a classwork or something that you worked on in a club or maybe a, a conference or a business case study that you did for a club, you can list those things under relevant experience. And then you can have a separate section for professional experience. Um, so if your education is relevant to the job, I would definitely put it first, especially if you have classes that are relevant to the job. If your education is not relevant to the position, so let's say, again, you're a business administration student, but you're applying to a software role and you haven't taken a software class, but you are in all of these different software clubs, you had a software um, internship, you can put all of that under relevant and professional experience and then have your education listed at the bottom. Um, so really you can move things around, but again, most relevant experience, a thousand percent should be on top. Do recruiters focus more on the first few experience bullets rather than the later experience and bullets? If so, how could we edit if the experience a while ago is more relevant to the role we're applying to? Uh, Sandy, that's a really, really good question. Um, so again, you can use that relevant experience section um, to really highlight the things that you have done that are super relevant to the experience. Um, I generally tell students, especially if you've gotten enough experience in college to remove things from high school, um, unless you're a freshman or a sophomore and you don't have that much experience, like get the high school stuff out of there. Um, but if that's what you're talking about, that's more relevant, like maybe you just like had a really great experience or you got to work on a technical project and it was from a while ago, you could just move that up under relevant experience. As long as you feel like you still have the skills and the capabilities from that experience. Um, if you don't, then I probably wouldn't include it up top. I'd keep it on the bottom. Um, but yeah, I think it, it it doesn't necessarily matter on the date if you move things up to the relevant experience section um, or you have that as like the second bullet under the relevant experience section, um, just so that way it is more top of mind. So I know that, you know, we like to see things chronologically. We wanna see what you've been working on recently and then, you know, definitely make sure you list other things from previous experiences. But that's where I really love the relevant experience section versus like professional experience or recent experience, um, because that's really what we want to see and what we want to know. But it has to be truly relevant experience. You have to be able to talk about it. You have to be able to back up that you actually can speak to those things that you worked on. Does that help answer the question, Sandy? <clears throat> Great. Um, there is a question about any thoughts on the one column versus the two column resume. Um, again, personal preference here. I like just one good section resume, but I've, I've talked to and reviewed many two column resumes and they work just as well. So um, again, if you feel like your relevant experience is really highlighted in that two column resume, then I would definitely go for it. <clears throat> of course, I didn't fill up my water bottle and I've been talking a lot now. <laughs> oh. 
Anything else? Do we sponsor Canadians for internships or co-ops? Um, I wouldn't say we sponsor in terms of like uh, providing you with the visa, but we do hire Canadians for internships or co-ops as long as you have sponsorship through school. <coughs> Sorry. And that's the same for international, um, any international student. Um, we can generally hire them as long as you get sponsorship through your school. We usually start hiring summer interns in the fall. Um, and then we usually are still hiring them in the spring. So um, our summer intern recruiting definitely opens up in the fall. Um, sometimes it's later in the fall, but generally in the September timeframe. Um, and then we hire through the spring. <clears throat> what is something you wish students knew about the recruiting process from a recruiter perspective? Um, <clears throat> that's a great question. I wish that students knew the, how many resumes and applications we truly are going through that, um, you know, it, it's it's hard to address every single application and it's hard to talk to and communicate with every single student because of the influx of resumes and applications that we see. Um, so, you know, sometimes if you're if you're feeling down because you applied or you reached out to a recruiter on LinkedIn and you haven't heard back, um, it's likely just because they are uh, dealing with a high volume and it's not specific to you or to your ex specific experience. Um, also, I think um, an important thing to know about the recruiting process is, um, you know, we know that you are looking for a role in experience and experience and that you're hoping that it can be at a place where you really do want to work, but sometimes you're just looking to, to just get a job, right, or get experience from a well-known organization. Um, but really think about a company and their values and, um, you know, what, what they do and, and if that's a place that you could see yourself post- your graduation, because I think a lot of times we're vetting students to see, is this somebody that we would want to hire uh, after their um, graduation? Or is this just somebody, um, you know, who's just looking to get experience? And we, of course, want that for, for you as, an, as someone who's pursuing an internship, but you do want to make sure you're doing some of that value alignment, um, you know, that you're interested in what the company ultimately does. Um, and definitely make sure you know what the company does also. <laughs> uh, we do provide sponsorship for graduate roles for international students. It just depends on the position and the technical capabilities. Um, we're getting um, less and less, un unfortunately, we're getting less and less approval for sponsorship at the entry level. So it does have to be more of a technical focused role. <clears throat> Referrals are great. Um, in some ways, <laughs> in some other ways, sometimes, you know, it, it really all depends, but I would really recommend just like leveraging your network. And that's sometimes the best way to get your foot in the door to, to learn more about an organization and, and um, talk to people to find out their experience, to make sure that that's something that you feel like you would like. Um, I wouldn't say that referrals are the only way that we hire people, um, but, you know, when you're thinking about diversity and you're thinking about wanting to have different backgrounds and educations in, um, sometimes, you know, as long as referrals are coming in and, and it's not the same person over and over again, then there's no issue I have with, with referrals. But we do want to make sure we're being um, just inclusive of everybody and making sure that we're not just hiring people that people know. Um, Sandy, that's a really good question. So Sandy asked, would you recommend networking more with recruiters or professionals in the field that we're applying? Um, both. <laughs> um, recruiters are going to be your, I guess, in, if you will, on how to apply, what's the timeline, what's the process. 
Um, but a lot of times the professionals are the way that you really understand about the organization and about how things work. Uh, recruiters are in a way just like, you know, the people who are the official transaction, right? Like we, we are reviewing the resumes, we're making sure that the hiring manager has a good influx of resumes. But if you're connecting with people that are teaching you about the organization, about what they're actually working on, that's so much more valuable to you than anything you can learn from a recruiter because we're not the ones actually doing the job. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like go in, in network and LinkedIn requests with every single recruiter out there. I would be really selective about um, people that you're really, or places you're really passionate about working for. Um, and then, you know, in the terms of the disciplines and the fields that you're interested in, make sure you're connecting with those professionals. And then if it's more like, hey, I'm really interested in this organization and in this company because I really align with their values and what products they're putting out there, then I would network with the recruiters. Hopefully that helps. Would recruiters assume students might need sponsorship when they see an exotic last name? If so, should we even mention that we don't need sponsorship in my resume? Um, exotic is an interesting choice of words. <laughs> um, you know, I've seen both. I've seen people who have very generic names put in their resume, like does not need sponsorship. So I wouldn't necessarily feel like if you feel like you have an exotic name, you need to put it in there. Um, so you definitely can do that. Um, a lot of applications ask you, right, um, if you do require sponsorship. So just be honest about that. And, and usually managers or recruiters are looking at your application and assessing whether or not, um, you know, they would be able to hire you for the role. Ultimately, if, if a team can't hire you because they can't offer sponsorship, um, you know, you don't really want to be considered for that role because then you wouldn't have a job. So <laughs> um, I would definitely make sure that, uh, you know, answer the question appropriately in the application process. But if you want to disclose it on your resume as well, that's fine, but it's not a must do. Any other questions? I should have probably gone to the next slide where I asked about questions here. <laughs> All right, it doesn't look like anyone else has any other questions. So um, do you have any last words for um, everybody, uh, Becky? Um, yeah, I think honestly, your resume is a very frustrating part because, you know, like we talked about before, it's really challenging to make sure that you are submitting the most qualified resume for every job. So don't necessarily feel like you have to have the perfect resume for every application. Um, maybe try to perfect the ones that you're super, super, super excited about, and then leverage your networks and make sure that you're connecting with people and learning more about the organizations that you're super excited about and learning more about those roles that you're really passionate about. Um, your resume, if you're a really good fit for a position because of your background, your skills, your experience, your resume is going to highlight that, right? But anything else that you can do to make sure you're connecting and networking really also helps that along. So don't feel super stressed about your resume because there are other ways that you can really position yourself to be a good candidate um, resume or not. So, um, the good news is, is, is you're going to find a role at some place and that's going to help you. You'll, you'll gain the experience that you need to eventually get to a role that you're super, super excited about. Um, but it is good to try to target those companies and positions that you really feel like you do align with. Um, it's hard when you're in college, I think to, to figure that out. Uh, but I think that, you know, with the, right, trying to figure out what your interests are and what your values are, you can try to align that way. 
Um, I hope to be in a future se session with Talent Board. I don't know if it'll happen this summer necessarily, but I am involved in Talent Board. I'm involved in URX. I love this community and I love talking to students and, and trying to help you in your careers. Um, it's one reason why I love university recruiting and I always have and um, hope to stay in this world because I think it's such a hard it's a, it's a hard time in life to figure out, okay, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? So I like to try and give back to this area and this, this space as much as I can. Well, it looks like you have quite a bit of fans here, Becky. So <laughs> hope to see you um, again next year. And I believe uh, you're one of the resume reviewers uh, for this summer. So if you want a chance to win a resume review, make sure to attend the sessions, um, be engaged in the LinkedIn post during these um, different sessions, and you might have an opportunity to win a resume review maybe with Becky. Um, so uh, with that said, thank you again, Becky, so much for being here today. Can we all just give a round of applause to Becky? You can use the emojis on your um, Zoom meeting. Um, but thank you, Becky, for your amazing presentation and just being so transparent um, about this process. Um, so just to, uh, as a reminder, we will go ahead and um, post this recording on our Talent Board website. Um, and then um, next up, we'll announce the winner for today's session to get their resume reviewed by one of our talent board members. And the winner for today is Sandy Thang. So congratulations, we'll connect you with um, one of our resume reviewers um, who are also talent board members this week. And next week, um, we have great and um, other great sessions coming up. We do have two interviewing workshops next week. Next Tuesday will be our behavioral interview workshop hosted by Dropbox. And then next Thursday, we'll have our technical interviewing hosted by Figma. So um, great organizations, again, hosting these um, events. So we hope to see you all next week. Thank you all again. And thank you, Becky, uh, for joining us today. And congratulations, Sandy. Congrats, Sandy, and thank you all for attending. Again, the fact you're attending these types of sessions uh, plays tribute to you all. You're, you're taking those extra steps required, and that's really impressive and great, so keep at it. And thanks so much for the opportunity. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone.